This week on On Story, co-creator, showrunner, and writer Lang Fisher discusses her process behind the hit Netflix comedy series, Never Have I Ever. I think when we first sat down to figure out what the show was, we tried to figure out what we had in common as teenagers. The main theme was we were not that cool. We were like loud and had big personalities. And so we wanted to make a show that had a girl who was like that. Lang reveals the ins and outs of coming-of-age comedy, witty dialogue, diverse representation on screen, and how she shaped related themes for teens and adults alike. Your background as a storyteller, as a writer, is so fascinating. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about the course that sort of got you to that opportunity to work with Mindy Kaling on this project? I always loved comedy and in college I did improv and sketch and I just I always loved comedy after college I tried my hand at like stand up and and sketch and and improv and kind of accidentally got recruited through improv to write headlines for the onion and um and there was a bunch of improvisers who were doing that And that was like very scary and hard because I was like, I don't know if I'm sharp enough to write these like very like incisive satirical headlines. And uh, but I really enjoyed doing it. And then I got hired full time there. And then I realized like, honestly, when I was in a comedy writer's room that I just was like, this is where I'm supposed to be like this is feels great. The Onion ended up having these two TV shows that it that were sort of short-lived, but that was sort of my first chance at writing for TV, but it was really sketch. I mean, it was like writing these fake news stories. And then from there, I like got an agent and then got um, hired on, on 30 Rock, on the last season of 30 Rock. And then from there, got hired on The Mindy Project. And that's where I met Mindy I guess Netflix loved her books and and loved the story she told about being a young person and wanted to maybe make a show about that. And Mindy, (laughs) to her credit, was like, I was not that interesting as a teenager. Uh, My life was too boring, but I would like to make a show set now about um, a teenage Indian American girl and... I happen to have like a deep love for YA content. <laughs> so she asked me if I wanted to to join her in creating a show. And so we started working together and came up with Never Have I Ever. And what was the development process like once you got on board the project? I think when we first sat down to kind of figure out what the show was, we tried to figure out what we had in common as teenagers. And the like kind of main theme was we were not that cool. We didn't really have boyfriends and we like, you know, were just not like head cheerleaders. But the other thing was, is neither one of us was a wallflower. We weren't shy and we weren't like awkward. We were like loud and had big personalities. And so we wanted to make a show that had a girl who was like that, who maybe wasn't popular, but had like confidence in her own right and had a group of friends that was, you know, diverse and also really confident, even if they were sort of weird, because that's like what we (laughs) grew up with. I remember us having conversation that's like, what is her deep wound? And we have both lost parents that were very dear to us, you know, like, and so we're like, let, you know, I think let's have her just lost a parent, a dad. And, you know, we actually, our writer's room had quite a few people who'd lost a parent and a couple who'd lost parents in high school, because that is such a specific time to have that kind of grief because teenagers don't deal well with grief. And we thought an interesting balance and something that could give her drive and could give story momentum is if she has this pain that she refuses to deal with. 
and that she is channeling all of the energy from this pain into the stuff that we all love in teen shows, like trying to date the popular boy, trying to be popular, trying to go to parties. Tavy, the reason I was enlisted by your doctors and your mother is to delve into some of the major events that have happened in your life over this last year. Now, we've been seeing each other for months, and you still don't want to talk about your father. Well, what's there to talk about? He's dead. It made me sad. Now I want to talk about a major event that could happen this week. <laughs> Cherry, Doc. Oh, Lord. But it's being fueled by this deeper, like, sadness that she's refusing to touch. I'm curious if there are any touchstones that you looked for in writers to fill your room. I do not have immigrant parents, but I think listening to a lot of our, our writers who do um, from different countries, like not just India, there is this similarity of feeling like different or other than that I think we wanted to really nail in this character of her wanting to fit in and feel like she was like as cool and as like accepted as like anyone could possibly be. And, uh, and I think learning to accept her heritage and be proud of it is like part of the tale of, of the, of the show. And so, you know, listening to kind of some of the, the interesting stories from those writers uh, really helped us shape a lot of our stories. I'm thinking about the development or evolution of Davy as a character over seasons. One of the things I love is something you just alluded to her sort of leaning into her heritage and her culture. But at the same time, she's also a character that you all as a staff are not afraid to show her making mistakes or decisions that gets her in precarious situations. What's our goal for today? To, to make, make conversation. conversation. Right, we're talking to the boys. I'm gonna ask Jonah to come over and watch unreleased Ariana Grande footage. Before you know it, we'll all be boinking at prom. Okay. Boyfriend, here I come. Ah! Hey, Jonah. Ew, you're bleeding. One thing that was really important to both Mindy and me is to not make her so mature. Like, I think there's sometimes you see teenage characters who are like, talk like 40 year olds and enjoy like 40 year old music and like really are precocious and have incredible vocabulary. And that always sets off like bells in my head when I see it because there's so much comedy and immaturity and being like a selfish teenager. And sometimes I feel like, our, you know, I can, I hear our fans being like, come on, why can't she just like make a good decision? And it's like, it's like, cause she can't, like she's, she's a teenager and she's like so insecure. I mean, when I was a teenager, I was just like, like, I, like the true me was so deep inside of me. It was like buried beneath like layers of like, you know, costumes of trying to be confident. And like, you, you're just so vulnerable at that age and you're so afraid to not be noticed, but also to be noticed. And I just think you're just a pile of hormones and you act rashly. And so we want her to do that, but we also want you to root for her and to see her feel remorse and to see her you know, to see where it's coming from. You know she's doing something that's not great, but you can see why she's doing it. And I think, you know, I don't know if Davy's necessarily an anti-hero, but that is the trick of writing an anti-hero. It's like, I think that's like every Danny McBride character is that. It's like, you're like, he's a terrible person, but I like him, I don't know. But you know, it's just, you want to see people mess up and, and then like bounce back from it or learn from it and grow. How did you strike the balance between Davy being likable, but also making such tragic decisions from time to time? I mean, I think there have been times where we have written scripts where we have pushed it too far. And luckily the TV writing process has a lot of eyes and, and sometimes I'll pitch something to Mindy and Mindy will be like, I think that just makes her like too bratty or like too unlikable. And then like, Sometimes our executives will say the same thing and we'll be like, I don't know, she seems kind of like mean here, you know? And so sometimes it's like a collaborative effort, but I feel like we try to make her, anytime she does something really bad, we try to show remorse and we try to show the pain that it's coming from. When you show that it's coming from 
a place of insecurity or a place of pain, people tend to like feel for her. And as long as she kind of redeems herself somehow or comes back to make it up to the person she's wronged, then I, I feel like you can forgive her. And there are things that she's done that like maybe you don't forgive her for, but you also understand that like she's young and, and like she just has to figure herself out. And I think we all can kind of identify with that. I mean, I don't think anyone, I mean, maybe someone in here was perfect as a teenager. And if you were, congratulations. But like, I was like a jerk a lot of times, especially to my parents. So I think if you can show the humanity of the character, like a lot of times it uh, almost erases the thing they, they do wrong. My tray feels so entwined with the character of Davy. Like it would be hard for me to think of anyone else in that role. Can you talk a little bit about that casting process? Because it's a little legendary at this point. It was. I, I believe it was really Mindy's idea was just to be like, let's like you know, open this up to anyone. And I think in her real pursuit to make sure that they're like are these like are are you know many south asian roles on tv like it was like let's give a chance to people who have like n like no one like no inlet into um to hollywood and just like see who's out there and so we did this open casting call and we got you know like 15,000 submissions when we saw my trays uh tape it was hard to describe. She was just very different than everyone else. We were referred to her as like little raspy because she has this like raspy little voice and she was like kind of a tough little punk. <laughs> and like, was just like, mom, what are you doing? Like, I feel like she was just like seemed like petulant in this way that like really made us crack up. And so we were like, let's bring her into it. So it was like, when we narrowed it down, it was like somebody who was like very, a very polished actor and this girl who had never done anything and was literally starring in like Chicago, the musical at her high school in Toronto. And we, you know, we're like, we got to take a chance on her. One of my favorite creative choices within the show is the repetition of Mohan as a presence, both the voicemail, but also how he shows up in different ways when Davy needs him. Dad, am I ugly? What nonsense. I'm looking at you right now. You're the most beautiful girl in the world. No, Kamala's beautiful. And a boy at school said that I was an un... And he said something mean to me. This boy's clearly an idiot like this umpire. I mean, do you think John McEnroe would let that umpire tell him that he's not beautiful? No, he would stand up for himself. So I should beat up Ben Gross? What? No, 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 no. You fight back with your spirit, little one. You stand up for yourself, just like him. It started in the pilot, and it started because Mindy and I, when we were talking about our grief, about our own parents, we both realized we had had a very, very similar dream about our parents. You're in the dream, with like your dad and you're doing something mundane and then you realize in the dream you're like wait but you died and then he's like yeah but I'm better now and you're like oh okay and she had the same dream about her mom and we both had it many times so we put it in the pilot where he kind of is sitting on the couch and she's like am I ugly and then she's like wait you're you died and he's like I'm better now and then it was such a sweet moment that we were like let's just keep bringing him back and like having, you know, Nalini like remember him and remember stuff. And then, you know, we have scenes where she's talking to him as if he's there. And, you know, we've, we've tried to kind of keep that going because I think when you do lose somebody that, uh, especially that young, but like when you lose someone that that is so close to you, you think about them all the time. And I mean, you dream about them and you like wonder what they like would think of something. Wait, what are you doing here? This is my living room. N no, no, I mean, you died. Oh, Dad, I'm better now. And then you have another repetitive idea with John McEnroe as the incredible <laughs> voice of God, if you would. So today, Davey returns to high school. 
can she shed her old identity as the paralyzed Indian girl whose dad dropped dead at a school function? It's not likely. Those things are pretty unforgettable. But with working legs comes a whole host of new possibilities. So go get them, Davey. McEnroe really just came out of like a random conversation Mindy and I had where it was just like, I think we were just like, she's full of rage. It's good to have VO for teen characters because teens don't talk about what they're actually feeling. And so it's hard to know like what the truth is. But then it was like, she's full of rage. What if like McEnroe was just her inner monologue? And it was like, that's crazy. And they were like, is it though? <laughs> Should we ask him? And then she ran into him at some like event and was like, I wrote a part for you. And he's like, all right. <laughs> it's also hard not to love characters like Fabiola and Eleanor and how they add to the world, but they also have their lives and their interests and their desires themselves. We also wanted to create characters you kind of haven't seen. And so like having like Fabiola be this kind of like, introverted robot loving you know young gay woman like we were just like this seems like a cool um new type of person we haven't seen i mean she's sort of like a nerd in a classical sense because she loves robots but <laughs> she also is like coming out and she's you know falling in love with another uh like young girl who's cool and i don't know we we wanted to sort of explore that area and then like Eleanor is also you know I think particularly for Mindy it was important for us to show like real strong Asian women who aren't like quiet or diffident and like who have like big personalities and big opinions and you know I think that is like an important thing for her and for me. Whoa Davy, you look like an Indian Kardashian. Thanks, Fab, but I thought we are dressing hot today. This is my boy's medium polo instead of my usual large. The janitor said- No, just, no. Well, Stop. I know I did a good job. Get a load of sexy flapper girl. My grandmother died in this dress. Okay, let's just stick to the plan. What's our goal for today? To, to make conversation. conversation. I saw in an interview that you and Mindy did, you talked about the necessity for hot boys in a teenage sort of- I I know one of us said that. <laughs> <laughs> With Paxton, Hall Yoshida, obviously, you certainly have one through and through. What was it like developing that character um, over the course of these seasons? He's such a fascinating, that stereotype of a dumb jock, but you can see the sort of wheels turning and other possibilities behind that. Hi, Paxton. You don't know me, but my name is Davy Vishwakumar. I'm a sophomore. I sit behind you in history class. I was also paralyzed last year. Oh, okay, great, you are familiar with that. So here's the thing, I'm into you. Like, I could name every class you've had for the last two years, but I won't do that. And I know you'd never be my boyfriend because you're you and I'm me, but I was wondering if you would ever consider uh, having sex with me? Oh my God, I am such an idiot. I'm so sorry. I can't believe I just did that. Yeah. Okay. What? What? That actually worked? I think we wanted to start it off as like this like object of lust from her point of view. And then when you get to know him, he has these other dimensions. And so we thought it would be interesting to give him a sister who is adopted and has Down syndrome and to give him this insecurity once his swimming career kind of comes to an end. And it's like, he doesn't have it all made, even though it's like, in Davy's mind, like someone like him has got it all together and life must be like easy street. You know, we wanted to make sure that he like had a, his own vulnerabilities. And so when we were, I mean, some of it came about organically and, you know, when we decided to start doing these episodes from the guy's point of views, we, we just sort of like, we're like, what is an interesting facet about him that we 
we didn't know before. To us, it felt like important to keep their truths a little secret from her and to like kind of like keep them in their own world. Um, and so we know that like what they're revealing to her is all that she knows, but we also, the audience, know more about these guys because we've heard their narrators, Gigi Hadid and Andy Samberg. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about that a little bit? The choice to switch up the VO uh, actors and what that brought to life? Yeah. I mean, originally we were like, let's give every single person one. And then like, it just is like, this is going to get insane. We can't do this. The person who we chose for each of, of their, of their uh, narrators is someone that can kind of like embody them in like in some way, shape or form, like, either aspirationally or like can like hit an emotional chord for them. So like Gigi is someone who probably has been underestimated f because she's so beautiful. She also incredibly nice lady and a really hard worker and like comes and does those like VO sessions and is awesome and is great. And like Andy, I've worked with before at Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but you know, for Ben, it's like, I think Andy kind of feels like maybe the person like Ben would hope to grow up to be and like, is a little bit seems like a caretaker of him that sort of like feels like, all right, buddy, come on. This is Ben Gross. He is a 15 year old boy from Sherman Oaks, California. And I am American actor, producer, writer, and fake rapper, Andy Samberg. What can I say? I wear a lot of hats. Now you may be asking yourself, why is Andy Samberg narrating the story of this particular boy? Well, honestly, his dad's my lawyer and I owe him a favor, but Ben seems like a good kid. So happy to do it. We wanted them to kind of have like these like almost like spirit animals, but spirit celebrities that like really could like voice their, their like inner selves. And in season three, I love that we push so many of our characters into different relationships, different places, brings natural uncomfortability and conflict there. I heard you all call it the sort of natural shelf life of the story being four years. So that junior year being a really sort of crazy intense year before you hit senior year, was that some of the impetus behind those decisions or was there something else there you all were going after? Particularly for a high school show, I think you need to show your characters have growth. I think you have to show them change and show them like evolve a little bit. I mean, the, the funny thing is when you're writing uh, stories that are serialized, like our show is, it's really easy to be like, okay, this episode takes place over three days and then the next one is right on the heels of that because we had a cliffhanger and then it's like, then you realize the season took like two weeks and then you're like, all right, so the next season is like the next two weeks. Like you just like aren't moving time. So one thing was like, we realized like season one and season two, like we're like both just like first semester of sophomore year and we're like, we've got to move. <laughs> we've got to like go, <laughs> we got to get to junior year. So we did have like a time lapse this season. We want to show Davy grow up a little bit. We want to show her lose a little bit of the thing that started her off, which is if I'm popular, if I have this boyfriend, I won't hurt, I won't feel sad anymore. We wanted her to start to realize that she can't wait to have this amazing life. She actually already has it. And one thing that we kind of have done every season is have a little bit of a theme. Season one was about facing your grief. And, and season two was a little bit about dealing with her mental health. And like people called her crazy and she, you know, was like irrational and like realizing that and like accepting the fact that she's depressed and like, and it's okay and she's going to be okay. And then season three was sort of like trying to tell a story about realizing her self-worth. And I think, you know, what season four will be, will be kind of about like growing up and moving on because that's our senior year. You've been watching On Writing, Never Have I Ever with Lang Fisher on On Story. On Story is part of a growing number of programs in Austin Film Festival's On Story project that also includes the On Story radio program, podcast, book series, and the On Story archive, accessible through the Whitlock Collections at Texas State University. To find out more about On Story and Austin Film Festival, visit onstory.tv or austinfilmfestival.com.